Welcome to this video on seven frequently used date and time functions in Microsoft Excel. So just like previous videos, we're going to go through some nice, simple examples. We're going to break them down, give you reasons why you need to use these and any advice going forward if you want to make these more complicated. I'm using similar data that I've used in previous videos. There's tons of Excel videos on this channel and much, much more. So please do go back and have a look at them, whether it's back to basics or you want some of the more complex functions, they'll help you be much more productive when using the applications. So let's dive straight in, so not waste any more time. And I'm gonna get started with a function called today which is gonna bring me back to today's day. And that's pretty self-explanatory, but it is quite useful if you don't wanna type it in or you've not got the date in front of you on your device, you might hide it, it might be hidden over something else. So whenever I'm doing a function or a formula, remember I always start with the equal sign because I'm gonna tell Excel I'm doing a calculation and then I'm just gonna start typing in today. And I'm gonna double click to get the function up. It's opened me some brackets, but I don't need to put anything else in there. So I can just close those brackets and press enter. Now, if you remember from a previous video, you don't actually need to close the brackets. Excel will generally do that for you, but on the off chance that I'm doing a more complex function and I have multiple sets of brackets, I always fear that it's gonna give me an error. I'm gonna to have to do the whole thing again. So I've got into the habit of closing my brackets, but it is absolutely up to you. But you can see now it's given me today's date in the day, month, year format, because I'm in the UK. Nice and simple, nice and easy. The second one then is now. So it just adds a little bit of value to the today function. It gives you the time as well as the date. So I'm, I'm on that box already, I'm on that cell. I'm gonna do an equals and then now. It's again, it's opened me some brackets. I don't need to put anything in there. So I'm gonna close them out of habit and press enter. And you can see there now, I'll make sure this is nice and zoomed in. I've got the date, but I've also got the exact time as well. So it's just, if you need to stamp that on your document for whatever reason to say, this is the last time it was edited, this is the time it was approved, whatever, that might be a nice, useful function that you might want to use. So two very super simple ones to get us started. Let's move up now and look at the rest of them. So I've got three in one for you here. So there are times where you might wanna pull out specific detail from a date very quickly. So I've got my dates in day, month and year format. Sometimes I might just need the day. Sometimes I might just need the month for something and sometimes the year. And rather than having to go in and reformat them and just manually pull the data out, this quick function might help you out with it. So let me show you a couple of examples here. So I'm on the date, month and year column that I created. Let's do an equals and let's start typing in day. And then tell the system what date range I want it to look in. So I'm gonna go into order completed. Close my brackets and press enter and it's brought back 10, which is correct. That date is the 10th of the 8th, 2023. So it's brought me back the day. Now, obviously, like I said, you can easily see that in the information, but if you need that information to then use somewhere else for a lot of data, then this might be a super quick function because remember, you can click on that cell, you can hover over the bottom right and click and drag and pull that function down and it will find me the dates for the, the day for all of those dates really quickly. And then I can go away and I can use that information for something else. What I wanna show you also is you can do this exactly the same with the month and the year. So let's do equals month. Select the date that I wanted to find the month for, close my brackets and press enter and it's come back with eight, which is perfect. Finally, let's just do the year. Select that date again, close my brackets and press enter and it's brought back 2023. 
So if I just pull that down now, you can see all of them are 2023. But if I had it as a different one, then it would come back with days, either the month or the year. So it's kind of like just pulling out specific bits of information. If you've got a cell which has a date in it formatted as a date, you can use this function to pull out a part of that information really, really easy. So super, super useful. The next one then I'm going to look at is text. This returns the day of the week for a date. And you can either do it in shorthand or longhand. And by that, I mean Monday is in a full word or M-O-N for Monday. So let's have a look at this because there's times definitely where you might need to know. So the 10th of the 8th, 2023, what day of the week was that? And you can obviously go back and look at a calendar, but that's, that's sometimes quite painful. And this is a much easier way of doing it for a much larger group of data. So let's do an equals and text. And just click on that. And then I'm going to go for the order completed. And this has got multiple parts of the function. So remember, comma in between them. And then you want to tell the system how you want this to be presented back. So if you want the shorthand, you're going to put three Ds in speech marks. If you want the longhand, so you want the full word Monday, Tuesday, you're going to put four Ds in speech marks. So let me put that in the system for you so you can see. So I'm going to open my speech marks because any time I put text into a function, it has to move in speech marks. Otherwise, it will give you an error. Four Ds and then close my speech marks, close my brackets and press enter. And that's brought me back a Thursday. If I just go into that function and go into my function bar or my formula bar and just get rid of one of those Ds and press enter, you can now see it's brought me back the shorthand version. So it's THU rather than the full first day. So it's really up to you how you want that to, to be presented. And then again, like I said, if you can pull that down in the bottom right hand corner, it'll present you back all of those dates as days of the week, which is really, really useful. The next one I want to quickly show you, we are moving through these nice and fast. We're not messing around. I want to get as much information in your heads as possible. The next one is days. This returns the difference between two dates. So this might be quite useful because I've got an order date and a completed date. How long after the order date was that order completed? So I'm going to do a days calculation in here. So I'm always going to start with an equals and then start typing in days with an S on the end of it. Now just look at this function really carefully. It wants my end date first and then my start date, which is not overly logical, but please do pay attention. It's just the way it calculates it out. Don't get it wrong, otherwise your data will come back inaccurate. So my end date is the order completed date. I'm gonna press a comma to separate them and then put in my start date close my brackets and press enter and that's brought me back nine days and then just like before bottom right hand corner click and drag that down and I can now see exactly how many days it took for those orders to be completed after they were ordered on the system. It's a really nice quick way of doing that and then I can use that data for a table, a chart or anything to help me understand what is going on. So I've got a few more, let's go keep going. So Workday returns a date, however many days before or after. So a really great example of this might be, I've got my order completed dates and then I've got a five day delivery rule. So I'm expecting these orders to be in the customer's hand within five days of them being completed and this might just help you understand things like that so you can find x amount of days before or after a date really quickly using workday so i'm going to do an equals and then i'm going to start typing in workday 
And it is just looking at working days as well. So it's not going to take into account the weekend. I've got another example of this, which can be a bit more flexible. But this is just looking at your work day. So it's super useful if you've got a five working day delivery time, for example. So let's just do this. I'm going to go from my order completed date as my start date. I'm going to put a comma and then put five days because that's the example that I just used. You can see you've got in the slightly different brackets there. You've got holidays. It will allow you to be a bit more flexible um, and define a few more rules in here. But I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I just want five days, five working days after my order completed date. Close my brackets and press enter. Now he's come up with a number, which is which is interesting. And that's because this cell's probably not formatted as a date. So let's quickly fix that. So right click and format cells. And then let's just format it as a date. And then you won't see the bottom of the box if I don't pull it up. Let's just click OK. And there you can see now that's on the 17th because remember it's not looking at weekends it's just looking at weekdays so it knows exactly what's going on and it's going to give you those dates so if you do get it looking a bit funny just make sure it's formatted in the right so it's looking at a date it's not formatted as text and it might present it wrong just like it did for me if it is do not panic check your formatting the final one is a bit a bit of more flexible work day one. It's where you can define what that weekend looks like. So let's do this again and do an equals and work day, but I'm going to do work day dot I N T L. So this is now asking me for my start date. So let's do the order completed again, the comma, let's do five and the comma. And it now wants me to define what my weekend is. So you can see Saturday, Sunday, our weekend days. So that is a standard weekend. But for some businesses, Sunday, Monday might be a weekend or Friday, Saturday might be a weekend. Just because of the industry or the country that you're in or the region that you're in might mean that your weekends are different. You might just have Sunday only as the weekend. If I scroll down, you can see I've got loads of different options to play around with. So I'm going to say Sunday is a weekend day. Select that in and then close my brackets and press enter. So that's actually given me a different day because I've told the system there that actually only Sunday is a weekday. Saturday is not a weekday because I've added a little bit more detail to that function, which is super, super useful. I just also want to show you if you want a day, a number of days before a date, then you can do that using the same function as well. If I go back into my first one and I go back into workday, and instead of five, if I put minus five there and press enter, it's going to give me a date five days before the 10th, the order completed date that I selected. So if you want a date before, then you just need to put a minus in. If you want a date after, then it's a positive number. And that's the same with both workday and workday.intl. Just remember that second one is where you can be a bit more flexible about what your weekends are. You can define them as just one day or specific days of the week, depending on how your business or your information needs to work. But they're really useful to help you out identifying X number of days after a date. So we've got some really simple ones there to work with. We've gone into a little bit more detail on some of them. You know now how to put the today's date into your Excel spreadsheet. You know how to put the date and time in there. You know how to pull out the day, month or year from a date. You know how to find what day of the week a date is. You know how to find how many days are between two dates. And then you know how to add X amount of days before or after a date and define the weekend period as well. So lots to play around in there. Definitely give those a go. See which ones might work for you and be thinking about scenarios with your data where you might want to use these. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and please do let us know what videos you'd like us to record next.